here's the tale of the tape. And if you've been with us for the past eight months, indeed, if you're one of those who waited years for this to happen, you've memorized a lot of these numbers. Three-year age advantage for Lewis. Two and a half inches in height, it looks like more when they get into the ring. 217 and 242, as opposed to 215 and 246 back on March 13 again. Most people believe 242 is a very good sign for Lennox Lewis. There are some 6,500 British fans here. I find that extraordinary, amazing. 6,500 people flew over 5,000 miles to see this man fight and try to win all the heavyweight titles for the first time in this century for a Brit. And this despite the fact that through much of his career he was at best the second most beloved heavyweight in Great Britain, overshadowed by the far less competent Frank Bruno. But there is the record for Lewis, 34 wins, the draw in New York, the one loss to Oliver McCall, later avenged. Twice he has won heavyweight titles. The question, of course, reverts to an old saying in boxing that a great fighter, great champion, always has one more great fight in him. Has a Vander Holyfield already had that and other one more great fights. Evander Holyfield's extraordinary boxing record, 36 wins, three losses, one draw, 25 KOs, two of the losses to Riddick Bowe, one to Michael Moorer, and of course the draw last March 13. Fighting out of the red corner, wearing purple trunks with white and red trim, representing his hometown of Atlanta, Georgia. He weighed in at 217 pounds, and with a record of 36 wins, three losses, and one draw, he has 25 wins coming by way of knockout. Here is the former undisputed cruiserweight world champion, the former undisputed heavyweight world champion, and the current WBA and IBF heavyweight champion of the world. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome boxing's proud warrior, introducing Evander, the real deal, holy field. opponent across the ring the other title holder on my left fighting out of the blue corner wearing white trunks with red trim the big man from London England he weighed in at 242 pounds the 1988 Olympic gold medalist has a professional record of 34 wins one loss one draw with 27 big knockouts to his credit tonight attempting to become the first British heavyweight in 100 years to capture the undisputed title. Here is the hard-hitting and current WBC heavyweight champion of the world, introducing Lennox Lewis. All right, gentlemen, this will be clean. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. Any questions? Touch clubs, good luck. Let's go, touch clubs. Where's your mouthpiece? Ready? Just about half for Lewis and half for Holyfield. We should have drama tonight. Already you can see Holyfield trying to get closer to Lewis right from the get-go. Now he's beat him to the jab. Holyfield has said he would try to establish the left jab. He did. And Lewis fires a rare left hook. Where is the ideal range for Evander George? Is it right up in Lennox's chest? Or is it a medium zone? You gotta be a medium. You right there, touch his foot, and don't go any closer because you don't want him backing away. Just stay that distance. Lennox gotta make sure he keeps him on the outside. Evander is bobbing, but he's not weaving. He's going to one side, and he stays there. Holyfield misses with a left hook. Evander trying to project more sheer energy than was the case in New York. And whacking away at Lewis on the inside. Now for Evander, all of these close-range contacts he's making is better for him. You don't want to keep this fight at long reach. Evander pounds to the body as Lewis is backed up into a corner already. You know, he was able to get in one good left jab, and that gives him confidence. 
You can't start reaching at this point. You've got to let the fight come to you if you defend the Holyfield. And Holyfield reached with the right hand, and Lewis touched him up inside with a little right uppercut as the result. But already, Don Turner is yelling at Evander from his corner. He doesn't want to fight. Evander did something very smart. He jabbed Lennox Lewis right in the chest. Right in the chest. Off the round one results. You get the impression it's a better Holyfield already than was the case in New York. Lennox Lewis has got to keep his reluctancy that he had in the original bout. He wasn't overconfident. He just used his jab. The more minutes that Evander Holyfield stay close to Lennox Lewis, the better. He's wide open from the knee shots. He's still trying to chop over top, touch him, and starts trying to rip him underneath of you, and you're tying him up perfectly. Okay. Holyfield with the CompuBox edge in jabs in the first round, landing eight to Lewis's three. Lennox wasn't really snapping the jab as he did early in the fight in New York. Now he sticks it out there with a little bit more authority to start round number two. But Holyfield comes back, and you see Holyfield listening to Don Turner's instruction throw the jab twice when you throw it. Double up. Lewis is not able to hit him with a jab. So you throw two to make the big man back up. If you miss him, you at least back up. Hard punch by punch, Lewis step inside. Step. Is on a suicide mission, or is he going to get to Lewis? Evander's reaching out, pawing already. That's what he shouldn't be doing. He should be throwing uppercuts to Lennox Lewis' elbows, uppercuts to his chest. And Lewis, who said he would be back conscious to the of... Well, he's, like Larry said earlier, he threw a lot of good right hands in the first fight, but they were nothing that hit him square right, hit the vendor square in the middle of the face. Always on the side of the head. This fight, Lewis got to concentrate on going right down the middle with that right hand. Uppercut by Lewis as Evander jumps in with the jab. Lewis double jab. That's what you don't want at this part of the fight, is allowing Lewis to get confident with his left jab. You if you're Holyfield, you mean. Yeah, if you're Holyfield, you don't want him to get confidence with that left jab. He's dropping his left hand, make him do it lower by hitting him in the body a time or two. Lewis has released his right hand aggressively three times in this round. Levander throws the overhand right. He has to make contact with the left hand first. You know, Holyfield's brain trust wanted him to have twice the activity of the first fight. He hasn't shown that kind of energy yet. In his great rematch performances in the past, Evander Holyfield was able to throw a lot of punches in situations where he could attack. Now, Lewis got Holyfield, uh, Holyfield's got Lewis dropping his hand, looking. Now, Holyfield has the advantage. He can throw his jab now. But his punch count is dropping off again, George. He's just not releasing his hands and throwing as much as he needs to to be the aggressor. Yeah, he's dropping his hand. That means you can beat him to the punch because the big guy has to bring him up and throw. That round looked much like the rounds in the first fight. Inside, watch Lewis come up with a nice uppercut. Later on, good body shots by Holyfield. I could be mistaken about this, but Holyfield in his corner looks weary somehow. I don't see any energy. His body language is not lively. That could change you know, in five seconds. But that's the impression one gets from him. And now, just as was the case in New York, Lennox Lewis able to stick the jab in Holyfield's face repeatedly and start to set up power shots. Uppercut landed again. As, as said, Evander's advantage if Lewis continues to throw these uppercuts because he drops his knees. He bends his knees to throw his uppercut. Lewis backs into a corner on his own and then ties Holyfield up momentarily. Halpern separates them. Lewis walks out of the corner. Lewis lands a little left hook. And combinations. Now this is unusual for Lewis to be the better combination puncher. Now there's a triple jab from Holyfield and he sticks with it. That's one thing you said before the fight, George. If he gets into punching range, he's got to stay there and try to do some work. And don't let the loudest guy to get the distance again. Right hand lands on a counter for Lewis. One of the things that Holyfield observed after the first fight was that Lewis was punching, as he put it, at the target instead of through the target, meaning he wasn't loading up for big punches. 
and that doesn't give him time to reply as he would like. Well, that's part of Lewis's basic cautiousness. The yeah, Holyfield was able to get in some good body shots. Was able to jab Lennox Lewis in the chest. He didn't do that last time. So you're suggesting that you like a lot of what Evander's doing. So I like far, a lot right? of what he's doing. He's invested in the body, even jab to the chest. I don't like him standing up getting those jabs, but he, when he's not in range, get all the way out of the range, which, which he should be doing. When you fought Holyfield, did you feel like he had effective head movement against your jab, George? Yeah, it's a long, long time ago. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Much has changed in the eight years since April 9, 1991. That's why I named all my boys George, so I wouldn't have to remember him. Hard right hand by Holyfield. Cleanest punch of the bout so far. Standing close, trying to hit him back for hitting you. Don't do that if you're Lewis. Great, great, stick back. Out the head. What's up there? Go. Lewis is bending down, and Holyfield landed the left hook. Bending down. In the middle of the round, Holyfield lands a long right hand, no power on it, because Lewis was backing up. But later on in the round, he did land a cleaner punch. So there was some excitement in the third for Holyfield fans, but still. Overall CompuBox numbers, Lewis threw more and landed more. Harold, how do you have it through three? <laughs> I don't know, Jim. Amanda Holyfield, I thought, did enough to win the third round. He got inside and wrapped him a couple of times real good. Two to one, 29-28. Don Turner asked his fighter to go inside in this round. That's Evander Holyfield. So Turner apparently liked some of what he saw in round number three. Another big right hand for Holyfield as Lewis misses with a left. And Lewis, you want to keep this fight at a distance. You don't want to get it close. Uh, uh, Lewis's corner told him to step up and take the fight to him. I wouldn't do that at this point. Oh, it's a man sport, George. Let him go in and bust each other a little bit. Yeah, but the bigger guy, he looks bigger, but he's not all that big inside. He's, he's a tall guy. When you see a good jab like that, that means that he doesn't like mixing it up. Now, you, you pointed out that Lennox was bending forward in the last round. Why would he do that? It was the first round that Holyfield made contact of equal range with him in height. Lewis started to bend down looking for that uppercut. When Riddick Bow. A taller man leaned forward and agreed to exchange with Holyfield. Holyfield got chances to look good. Now, everything that every time that Evander gets close, he has to dive in. That's why they clinch. He's jumping in because of the distance. He can't get it. And Lewis goes back to popping the jab in Holyfield's face. And he can do that for about two or three rounds. He need not try to mix it up. Lewis holding his left hand below his waist, inviting Holyfield to jab. Holyfield leaving the opportunity alone for the moment. Right hand over the top by Lewis. And Holyfield pounds to the ribcage as Lewis holds his arm. Evander do anything in this round, and we're two minutes and 15 seconds into it. Lewis hasn't done a whole lot. He sits there and waits for one punch at a well, time. Well, he's landed maybe 15 or 17 jabs. Jabs score. Evander lands a right, Lewis lands a little right in return. Lewis get lazy and Evander Holyfield gets closer. And Evander again jabbing to the body, something he did not try to do in the first fight. Oh, I'm telling you, and it's paying off great dividends. Ooh, that right hand on the side of the head hurt. Kind of slid past Evander's ear though. Yep. When you get in close. Don't go flat quitting him. Mouthpiece, don't go flat quitting him. Double jab, double jab, double jab. Once again in round four, Vander Holyfield only threw 30 punches. Lewis, 49. But halfway through the between round period, you saw the graphic that indicated Lewis has landed half as many jabs in the first four rounds here as he did in New York. So Holyfield, though not doing much more statistically than in New York, is much more in the fight here early on. You know what? He good left hook. Solid left hook by Holyfield. And Holyfield grinning as Lewis now lands a big right hand. And Halpern telling Holyfield to watch his head as Lewis goes under and then over with the right hand and almost throws Holyfield over the top rope. Come here, come here, come here. The full 
shit in here stops now. This isn't a wrestling match. It's a boxing match. Just keep this clean. You understand me? Go. More an abrasion than a cut, according to Flip Omansky, the doctor. Lewis wasn't aware of it. The blood does start the trickle outside his right eye as he goes back to the uppercut and busts Holyfield again. Lewis thinks he's got Holyfield going with these right hands. Hey, hey, get back easy, hey. British fans chanting Lewis. for the man. Lewis better get his hands up. Holyfield is doing a good job. Whenever he's close, he throws something. Lewis hasn't had his hands up for eight years, George. He loves to fight this way, as do so many modern fighters. And he's doing something he didn't do before. He's leaning forward a little bit, trying to get that uppercut. Absolutely. He thinks he's got Holyfield going with his big right hand connects. Holyfield out. And the blood is flowing from Lewis's right eye. Outside the eye, as you can see, outside the orbital bone. Holyfield trying to make it a brawl. That would be to his advantage. That's right. You want to keep it a brawl and make that big man keep... And the good thing about this, I didn't mention, Lewis has his cup a little lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why Evander is able to go down and jab and hit him in the body a little better this time. Big yeah. difference in the position of the protective cup. Watch, Lennox going to work don't with watch, the uppercut again. Not only that, he gets himself in the range of getting hit himself. Well, despite the blood, so far it's been a big round for Lewis. Holyfield has got Lewis coming forward. That's what you want him to do. That's the only way you can bob and weave. You can't go forward bobbing and weaving. But again, Evander goes 20, 30 seconds without throwing a punch, George. He's now, got to be more active. Lewis goes to the body a little bit. And Lewis looking to the body. And then going up. Scheduled 12. Now that cut isn't so bad, but it sure does chink the, the, the what you call it, the shield of confidence well, it gives of a Lewis thing. something to think about, yeah, right? On how blood is slower. Holyfield has got his jab going better this time. Exactly 30 punches per round through the first five. That's the same level of inactivity that hurt him in New York. Going to the chest again. And knocking Lewis off balance and knocking him Going back. Going to the chest again. You cannot be allowed to be hit in the chest as a heavyweight. Keep your hands still. Keep your right, hands still. George. It's just Keep like someone taking a, uh, sticking a syringe and just sucking all of your energy from you. And so many young fighters don't even understand that, so they allow guys to do it. Looking for a knockout. He trained for a knockout. Now he doesn't have no idea how to get back and get this thing in control. Right hand by Lewis. Oh, my goodness. Why did Lewis do that? Frustrated. Lewis thought all he would have to do is come out here, and it was all his for the taking. He had no idea he would have to fight for this title. So you think Lennox Lewis was that totally complacent coming into this fight? Oh, no. He's, everybody told him, you won this fight. You should have knocked him out. And he forgot about it. He won it by good tactics. He had a good strategy going. Well... So many times in Evander Holyfield's career, it's been easy to be misled into believing that Battles, it was over. those jabs to the chest, one after another. And I'm telling you, a knockout could follow those kind of punches. All he has to do, Evander, now is get in one left hook to the chin. This could be over. Lewis headhunting in this round, concentrating on long right hands to Holyfield's head. Evander working to Lewis's body and stepping up the activity level in this round. Oh, his offense is bothering him greatly. He's hitting him in the body, in the chest, things he didn't do last time. Break, 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 go! You can bump, throw left and throw your foot. Stay off the ropes! Right now, Lewis says, let's see if it's right now. Round seven of a schedule 12. Lewis played around and waited around too long, and he turned this thing into a fight. He didn't need to be in the fight. And that was what Lennox Lewis was talking about, I guess, when he said, right now, oh, uppercut lands with thunder. Easy, easy. Quickly, Harold oh, Letterman. How you got a 3-6? Four rounds to two. 58-56, Lennox Lewis. I gave him the whole field a sixth round because he was busier. There's no question. Lennox didn't punch, but he's punching this round. 
Now Lennox fires the uppercut and throws Holyfield off. And lands the uppercut again. He's just waiting on that uppercut now. Buster Douglas got himself knocked out against Evander Holyfield, trying to land an uppercut from distance. Lewis should be jabbing and jabbing and making the fight. They both land uppercuts there. Holyfield with the right hand and Lewis with his own right hand. Well, Big left hand. hook by Holyfield. They're Lewis head to head now. Head to Lewis head. is hurt. Now Lewis smiles as Holyfield comes in. Holyfield thinks he's got a target. It was a left hook inside that hurt Lewis. It was a big one. That left hook partially blocked by Lewis's right hand. Lennox leans against the ropes himself. Holyfield working the body. Lewis has decided that the uppercut is his bread and butter. Keeps coming back to it. Evander Holyfield with a better plan tonight. A little bit more energy. Not that big a difference, but enough to make it much more of a fight. And that's that what body he shot hurt. That body shot hurt. Evander Holyfield land a good body shot, and it hurt Lewis. Hard left hook by Holyfield. Lewis stunned again. Lewis stands in. Holyfield fires back with the left hook. Lewis almost casual with the uppercut. Big target there for Holyfield. Emmanuel Stewart told him to go out and get at Holyfield, and this is the result. But here comes Lewis now. Lewis rallying again. Combination. Hard right hand by Holyfield. Lewis to the body. His own right hand lands flush. They trade shots at close range. Round seven, the best round these two fighters have fought against each other in two fights. That left hook apparently discombobulated Lewis for a few seconds. He's holding on here. Once again, Lewis coming back in the last 20 seconds of the round. And you heard Emmanuel Stewart still thinks that the best fight for Lewis is to engage Holyfield right in the middle of the ring. Compubox numbers in round seven, virtually even. Lewis 20 of 39, Holyfield 21 out of 45. Letterman, as you saw, gave the round to Holyfield, probably because of the big left hook shots. Right hand lands for Lewis. Holyfield much more engaged, looking much more confident than at any point in New York. Lewis obviously much more conscious of wanting to knock his man out tonight. Every landed punch but one in round seven was a power shot. Now that left jab to the body of by Holyfield again. <laughs> left hook upstairs now. Another left hook and Lewis backs up and ducks. Fires a right hand back and goes to the body. Lewis is totally leaning forward now. He is into trouble. If only Holyfield could just musk up a little energy to throw a couple hooks. He has made up his mind, Lewis has, that he's going to fight. <laughs> Lewis getting smarter and going to the body. And, and it looks from time to time that Lewis is a tired fighter. When he went 10 rounds fighting this style against Mercer in Madison Square Garden, he was totally exhausted at the end. Yep, and it was because of those body punches. And the bringing of that cup, that protective cup has been lowered. Holyfield got a green light to get down low. So it's a much more even fight. But despite everything we're saying, Lewis has landed some shots in this round and may in fact be winning the round. He's got his hands low. Holyfield couldn't miss if he just jumped in a flawed Patterson left hook. Which he did right there. Oh, jump in. Their heads come together again, and Lewis produces some good infighting as he drives Evander back to the ropes. Evander trying to flurry at the end of the round. Lewis blunted him there. Oh, Lennox Lewis asked by Emmanuel Stewart to resurrect his jab. Stewart, as a trainer, has never lost a heavyweight title fight. <laughs> Lennox Lewis has never knocked an opponent out past the eighth round. Holyfield has, and he goes for one here. You should jab. Don't wait to get in distance. Lennox goes back to the uppercut. Evander Wax to the body again. 
come in here. I'm in. Good. Holyfield's eyes are clear. Not so with Lewis. Holyfield looks like the fresher fighter. Lennox is still throwing more punches. When Lewis was exhausted and in trouble against Mercer in Madison Square Garden in a very Ooh, similar fight. A good left hook to the body by Evander Holyfield. The Englishman showed courage and heart good jab, the 10th round in the fight. Holyfield stepping it up again with that double pumping jab inside. Lewis jabs is a different fight, but when he stands there and wait for a big punch, Evander takes over. Left hook to the body by Lewis. Gotta admit that Evander's been in with a lot of giants, and he's never backed down from a one. Well, Evander Holyfield won't back down from anybody. Uppercut lands for Lewis. Holyfield misses the left hook. Lewis, but will Lewis take advantage of it? Multiple punches for Lewis. Holyfield not throwing back, fires the right and drives Lewis into the ropes. Lennox goes back to the body and the uppercut. Thrashing Holyfield with power shots. Now Holyfield's going to try to flurry again to convince the judges he's won the round. It's a smart professional thing to do. Holyfield is an excellent boxer. Knows what to do and when to do it. Lewis got in the last shot, so Holyfield decided to fire a left hook after the bell. Now let's see if we can catch that uppercut that hurt Holyfield right there. Lewis, big uppercut. Lewis trying to follow up. If he'd had a left hook to follow with. I have a question for you, George. When, when Lewis goes in and battles him, you say he should jab. When he doesn't battle him, you suggest he doesn't have the gumption or the courage to stand with him. Now, which is it? Because in the last few rounds, he stood right with Holyfield and Glum. I mean, this is a common thing we hear about Lewis. And one thing about Evander, when he protects himself, he puts his hand, arm all the way behind his ear. So that's why he's able to get caught with uppercuts straight up the middle. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through nine? Yeah. Six, three, or five, four? No, six, three, 87, 84, Lennox Lewis. Judges very often look at a fighter's physical appearance, especially in close rounds. Evander looks like he's fresh, and in certain rounds, right, Lennox looks back, like he's dying. Six, three on Letterman's guard, I'll bet you anything. There's at least one judge at ringside who has Holyfield ahead in the fight. Lewis should not engage into these exchanges. It's no good. He doesn't need it. He has the reach. But Evander Holyfield, this benefits him. He should try to create as much of this as he can. But he just landed another big right uppercut. And then you say, George, that he doesn't have it inside when he no, does No, he that. doesn't have it inside. That's why he shouldn't do it. Straight right hand lands for Lewis. Evander not throwing right now. Lewis with two body shots. Who looks tired but still has the energy to fire the two body shots and block the left hand. That's the good thing about training. Whenever he, uh, Lewis moves to Evander's left, Evander can't get anything off. He just goes to his left, nothing. Left hook lands for Lewis. Oh boy, that was some good clean left hook. I don't think it did a lot of damage, but it just landed. Evander Holyfield didn't throw many punches in this 10th round. Six minutes to go. It'll be the 11th time in Holyfield's career that he's been into the two championship rounds. Lewis, far less. It'll be his third. CompuBox numbers in round 10. Lewis landed 23 out of 44 punches. Holyfield, 9 out of 34. Does Holyfield have six intense minutes that his corner is asking him for? He's got bounce in his feet at this point. Yeah, he's... What a fighter this guy is. Straight left for Holyfield. Lewis landed a right hand earlier. What a man he is. 37 years old and without a real big punch. You know, there have been older fighters that have done well because they had a big punch. But to work at this, at the high energy level, he needs to, because he's a small heavyweight, he's just a remarkable guy. Holyfield busting Lewis to the body with the left hand. Holyfield showing much more energy here in the 11th than he showed in a seemingly weary round 10. Ooh, good body shots by Lewis. And Lewis 
goes out and jabs and steps around, he has this fight won. Whenever he takes it, uh, his trainer's advice, getting in there, that's when things turn around. Well, Lewis is just standing on the mound, pitching now. And when Holyfield comes forward, Lewis leans forward and pops him with that uppercut. Well, he's on the mound like a pitcher, and he just stands there and does whatever he wants. Woo. Hard left took by Holyfield. He stands on his mound, and those body shots hurt. Right hand by Lewis. Holyfield misses his left. Watch your head. Lewis has better try to put all, everything to rest and win this round. Combination by Lewis. Holyfield lands a big right hand in return. In terms of energy and, and the kind of effort the two fighters are putting forth. But still, Lewis throws more and lands more in almost every round. Cut outside Lewis's eye from the butt early in the fight has never begun bleeding again. Four punches land for Lewis. Holyfield can't get one in. Lewis jabbing and bouncing now. His energy coming back. Yeah, Holyfield is cut. Yep, blood cheek. on the left cheek of Evander Holyfield. We get ready for the 12th round. Three points. Lennox Lewis has never lost a decision. Evander Holyfield has never had a 12th round knockout. And if Lewis wins, he's the first unified British heavyweight champion since Bob Fitzsimmons in 1897. Harold Letterman with Lewis ahead by five. I'll bet you anything, all three official judges have it closer than that. Just a guess. This has been a close fight. I'm not saying I disagree with Harold's card. Vander's got card. some thunder on those punches, I'm telling you. Lewis just doesn't seem to respect Evander Holyfield's power. What should the two fighters be doing in this round, George? Evander's got to pull it out. He just can't sit there and box this round. He's got to fight. If ever you're going to fight, this is the fight of your life fight. Lewis stuck the jab in Holyfield's mouth, then just missed with the right hand. Lewis Holyfield trying to put the pressure on. Uppercut lands for Evander. Lewis slightly staggered. Now he looks to land his right. Evander with a lot of energy here in the 12th. Lennox seeming to try to load one big shot. Now he goes back to the jab. Lewis throwing his punches sloppily here in the 12th round. Uppercut lands for Lewis. Lewis trying to measure him in for an uppercut. Lewis has got a fight. Just can't think about winning a decision. If the fight is on the table here, if anything, Holyfield's had the better of it with sheer energy. Lewis Corner told him, don't hold anything back. He might not have anything to hold back. Yeah, you always got something you wish you had done in the hotel room. Two body shots by Holyfield. He sticks in a little uppercut. Lewis is holding on. Right hand lands for Lewis. Hits Again, and he ties Holyfield up inside. Lewis may think that he's won the fight and needs only to survive. We're going to find out in five more seconds of fighting. They fought a lot better fight this time. And the fans appreciate it. I had Lewis winning the fight. Much better fight. Holyfield fought better. I thought Lewis won it. And in the first minute of the round, he landed that right hand shot and that left hook. And then later on in the round, a Holyfield uppercut landed flush. So even though the punch stat numbers were fairly even, and here's Tim Hallmark, Holyfield's longtime physical trainer, praying, praying in Holyfield's corner during the course of that 12th round. You just hope the judges are not swayed by what happened in the, the previous fight. Just score this fight the way it was tonight and the way it is tonight and forget about the past. Do you have a winner in your head, George? Yeah, this, it's a close fight this time. When a close fight, I'd go for either guy. But Holyfield did a lot better. If he had not had the stigma of that last fight, I think there wouldn't be any questions that he could have pulled this off. You think Holyfield might have won the fight, George? If, if it had not been for the original thing, you see.
Harold, how did you score it? <laughs> well, Jim, if the seven, it was a close fight. Four rounds to three. But eight, nine, ten, eleven belong to Lennox Lewis. He landed the punches. He threw the shots. Better clean the punches at eight, nine, ten, eleven. Evander pulls out the twelve. Eight rounds to four. One sixteen, one twelve. Lennox Lewis. Judge at ringside, Jerry Roth scores at 115 to 113. Judge Chuck Jampa scores at 116 to 112. Judge at ringside, Bill Graham sees at 117 to 111. All three in favor of the winner and the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Lewis.